Damn. Mr. Parkin. The Friday night phone call. Did you do that for your whole time at Carlton? Or your whole yeah. coaching career? Yep. How long did it take? Oh, most of Friday night. And what I were you... Particularly when they waiting for Peter Bazasso to come home from Mooney Valley. <laughs> you would have had a level of, of, of being autocratic and you're in charge, but you just by nature would have had to do personality management as well with those blokes, wouldn't you? I think and you they, know who we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know who we're talking about. And they were, they were, Sam, some of the, and how privileged I'd been. Looking back, I didn't think so at the time because it was difficult yeah. when you're looking after, you know, Perovic and McClure and Wow Jones and, you know, you, uh, Marku and Ashman and, oh, Ashley was pretty, pretty straight. Um, you leave out and, and Johnson and Buckley. Well, Johnson, or oh, Buckley, <laughs> Buckley, another one. Dooley, who was the most introverted person I've ever met in or out of football. Um, it certainly did, what's the word, test me as a fairly new coach in the business. The modern day player may not even be aware that in the old days that players had jobs. No, 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 they, were, they, they wouldn't say. And I think at long last we've got some research that, says, that suggests that um, Sam, if you can get your players, and it's difficult to do because they are professional operators on huge salaries and the clubs ought to be making massive demands on their time and focus, etc. But what we now understand, if you can get your players' heads into something else other than their football in a sincere and committed way, yeah. they would be better football. In saying that, it, it wasn't all roses, by the way. M many people consider that the Carlton footballers working at the stock exchange in the late 80s may have single-handedly brought down the economy but um, I just wanted to point that out there it wasn't all just all roses uh, it wasn't all beer and skittles no that's true but there was a fair bit of beer and skittles I am wearing what I consider your signature uniform from the early 80s did, did, did it bring back any memories it did. Of tan, tan that's, pants yeah, that's right. the blue v-neck and, and an, a wide pretty wide shirt that's but not as, they weren't as white as the flares, the, the tampons no. actually had flares. I couldn't buy any for the flares. Now, you know, I'll, still I'll, get them at the op shop. <laughs> I went to Bob Stewart's in Q. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> just for you, yeah. just for you. Um, I, I, as, I was in That's the chamber. I bought all my clothes growing up. I grew up in Hawthorne and that was where we got all our clothes from. This wasn't standard uniform for your assistant coaches or the club uniform at the time. This is what you decided. Is that fair to say? Yes, that was my... Decor it was my signature. Yeah, it's <laughs> my s signature dress. <laughs> Sam, you've actually got that right. And I started a, it started a, had a bit of a following. Oh, Not really? Many, but I can, <laughs> I, there are at least three or four people I know who adopted the style. I'll throw a couple of um, names at you, if you don't mind. <laughs> don't <laughs> throw just, them too hard. No, Sam, no, and it, it's all Jimmy Buckley. Um. I love Jimmy. He's uh, he was one of the only, only bloke who ever whacked me Wait, as, a, as a coach. Yeah, punched me up after a game. But I've forgiven. I've forgiven him for all that. Really? Well, he, I don't know whether he got Cole Kinnear first, and I went to help Cole, and I copped one too, or whether he whacked me first and Cole came in and he got whacked for trying to So this me. is after a game when obviously Jimmy's pretty upset and he's decided to just clean house. Well, he? it was a bit later in the night. It was in the oh, okay. it's the understand that we had. They, they, they must have talked about the players. The understand, which was the nightclub in the gardener stand underneath okay. where the change rooms are now. What were you doing there? That's a very good question. It's a very good question. I didn't frequent those sorts of places. He just had exquisite skills, Jimmy, and was as tough as he had that that really tough, resilient nature. And he played with injuries and, and when he was sick and all sorts of things and still was able to perform like a lot of players. And no excuses from Jimmy. Jimmy was the one player that would never, ever make, he was always accountable, I'm not so much responsible for some of the things he did off the field, but he was always accountable and responsible for everything he did on the field. I love coaching Jimmy Buckley. He was um, a unique individual. Well, I can see why you sacked him. <laughs> what about, uh, all right, Wayne Johnson? Probably uh, what I would call the best clutch player, if we use that term. Uh, the best big moment player I reckon the game has ever seen, not just the Carlton Football Club. Uh, Dom had the ability to do exactly what was required in the biggest moments of the biggest games. I can think of the start of the 19... 
82 grand final when we knew Richmond were gonna, we had a little midget bunch of greats. I knew one would go down, warned the players would happen and Dom went out there and if you have a look at his first, almost the first goal kicked of the game, he did it on just sheer um, tenacity, just grabbed it and and uh, forced a goal. We were three one, I think three one before Richmond scored. Yeah. And then at the end of the game, I might be slightly out here, but I think it was a three goal one difference. They were equally as good as us for that moment through to the end of the game, but couldn't make up the gap. Which Dom was the one who set the standard in his approach to kick that. Uh, I think the first goal of the game. And also, you know, so I have this, I know 87, you went there for 87, but I remember his first five minutes of that grand final so, where he pointed out that the, the Hawthorne had five in the square, so they, didn't, they weren't allowed to bounce it. He took the kick and not Madden, which was by the rules, Madden was supposed to take the kick. Right. He kicked it down and Ken Hunter took a grab, yep. kicked the point. Then he kicked, Jono, so Jono kicked, then he kicked the first two goals of the game and knocked out Dipper. That's not a bad first five minutes of a grand final. Who did you have to coach less, Bruce Dahl or Ken Hunter? Oh, a line, a line ball. Uh, Bruce was so introverted. Um, probably the best team player I have ever had the privilege of working with. If you could articulate it, Bruce would produce it perfectly. And they loved him. Everybody wanted to play near him because he was the, the, tr the team player to me is someone who does what he's supposed to do at the time he's supposed to do it and he does that all the time. And that means you can be trusted. And teams are built around people are trusted. Bruce would have been the most trusted player in the Carlton Club. Criticised him once, I think, in a you know six or eight year period that I coached him. You remember what it was for? Yeah, not punching behind. I sent the runner out to him. And wow. He was uh, very upset that I sent the runner out to him and sent the message back with the runner to tell Park and I don't have the runner. <laughs> so I never sent the runner to Bruce ever again. Bruce's message back to you was, I don't have the runner. That's right. And you never sent it out again? I oh, know, I would never send the runner out to Bruce again. <laughs> and Ken was, Ken for what he bought, a bag of bones, six foot one or two I suppose, played key position front and back, um, took more marks going sideways and backwards and in the air than probably any other player that I've ever seen in the game. Should have been killed multiple times. So coachable, yeah. hung on every word, tried to be the best that he could be in every situation and and became a very loved, for all the right reasons, a very loved person and probably my favourite player of all time, I would think. The end of 85, you finish at Carlton. I was sacked, yeah. But my question is this, when you got sacked, did you know that months away from arriving at the club were Kernahan, Bradley, Motley, Naley, Doherty? Sam, did I know? Who recruited them? Oh, Who recruited no. them? Really? Yeah, well I, re well, I was very much responsible for, um, for Kernahan and Bradley and, and people like that. I was a part of that process that got there, but yeah, it was a bit sad. But the nice thing, Sam, after the wash-up, yeah is that when I came back the next time, they were all there and I had the chance, the opportunity to coach some of the great Carlton people. Uh, it was, was sad, because Stephen Kernahan is one of the finest men I've ever had the privilege of working with. You know, he's got time for everybody, he's just as he is, Stephen. Um, Braddles is probably the best prepared athlete that I have ever worked with. Maybe. Despite your advice? Of, of, of either studying or working. He said, no, I'm going to be a professional footballer. Yeah, he, he, we couldn't get him to work. He played a lot of golf and a lot of tennis. And That's a shame it didn't work out All those sort of things. Well, he... The other thing that's come up in, in my previous chats with uh, your former players include that a David Park an hour was not... Well, it wasn't 60 minutes, David. No, it was... What, how long was it? A couple of hours, usually. We'll be out here a for couple. an hour, but they can't put the, the, the park and now got a, got, a, got a lot of pasting over the time, I must admit. Yeah, well, as you've worked out already, you only have to ask one question. I've got verbal diarrhoea, so it uh, was one of my problems as a coach. No meeting, no discussion, no training session was ever brief. Okay, I should mention to everyone we have been driving for four and a half hours, but that's, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm loving every minute. I'll go back to... Um, okay. 